We have a car of mass 1200 kilograms, and that's pulling a trailer of mass 800 kilograms along a level road by means of a tow bar. And we're told in the question that the resistances to motion of the car and the trailer are proportional to their masses. So let's draw a force diagram for this scenario to start with. So here is a car. And there is the trailer. So we have resistances to motion. We're told that the car experiences a resistance to motion of 300 newtons. So it gets pulled backwards with a force of 300 newtons. I'm also going to draw tension forces. So we have T in that direction, T in this direction. So the car is pulled backwards by the trailer and the trailer is pulled forwards by the car. We're trying to work out the resistance to motion which the trailer experiences. We know the resistances to motion are proportional to mass. So then what we can do with that information, we can write down an equation. We can say resistance to motion is proportional to mass. And then with that, we can say resistance is equal to some constant multiplied by mass. That's what you can do when you have proportionality. You can change the proportionality symbol into an equal sign. If you introduce a proportionality constant, which you multiply by one of the two terms. But we don't know what k is. So what we can do is we can use these two values. We can use the resistive force on the car, so 300. Set that equal to k times m, so that would be k times 1200. Rearrange that, and we end up with k is equal to 1 over 4. Now that we have k, we can use that to work out the resistive force on the trailer. So. Using the same equation, the resistive force is equal to k, which is now 1 over 4, multiplied by the mass of the trailer, so 800, and that will give us 200 newtons. So that's our answer to part A. I'll put that on our diagram. We have a backwards force on the trailer of 200 newtons. For part B, we are told that the engine of the car exerts a driving force of 3,000 newtons. So I'll draw that on the diagram. That is 3,000 newtons forwards. We want to find out the acceleration of the system. So we can do this in a few different ways. We can consider the individual objects. So we consider the trailer, consider the forces on that, and get an equation of motion. And then we can consider the car, get an equation of motion. Both of those equations will involve T as well as A. And then we can solve simultaneously to work out tension and acceleration. That's a perfectly fine way of doing it. I think what's easier is if we consider the system as a whole, and then we can work out acceleration directly from that. So when I say the system as a whole, I mean consider the car and the trailer as one single mass, and that will be a mass of 2,000 kilograms. And the overall forwards force on the trailer on the car and the trailer, sorry, would be 3,000 newtons. That's the driving force. And the overall backwards force will be 200 plus 300, which will be 500 newtons. The tensions cancel out. One's going forwards, one's going backwards. They just cancel out. So now that we have our force diagram, we can then work out what acceleration is. So we can do 3,000 newtons in the forwards direction minus the 500 newtons backwards. That's the resultant forwards force, and that will be equal to m times a. So our acceleration will then be 2,500. That's what we have on the left-hand side. Divide that by the 2,000, just rearranging, and we end up with 5 over 4 meters per second squared. And now that we have the acceleration, we can work out the tension. So now we do have to consider the individual objects separately in order to work out the tension. So the easiest object to consider would be the one on the left. And the reason for that is because that object only experiences two forces, tension forwards, 200 backwards. For this object, it experiences three forces. We have tension, friction, and the driving force. We can consider that object. We'd still get the right answer. There's just an extra force in there. So it'll be a bit quicker just to consider the 800 kilograms object. So for that object, the forwards force is T, the backwards force is 200 newtons. So this will be the overall forwards force. 
and that will be equal to MA. So that's 800 times by A, so multiplied by 5 over 4. This will be equal to 1,000. So rearrange that, and we get T is equal to 1,200 newtons. For part D, so for part D, I'll just read the question out first. So we're trying to work out the distance that the system travels during the braking period. So we're trying to work out what distance is. So what are we told? What information are we given? We're told the system reaches a speed of 24 meters per second. It continues at a constant speed. There's then an electrical fault. The car switches off. The brakes are used and the system comes to rest. We're told the braking force and then we are told that the resistances to motion don't change. Okay, so our forces are a bit different for this scenario. Let's draw a new force diagram. So there's the car and the trailer. They experience the same resistive forces as before. So 200 newtons, 300 newtons. But there's also a braking force on the car. We're told the braking force is 1,000 newtons. So this force, I'm saying, is a combination of the braking force, 1,000, plus the resistive force that we had earlier, which was 300. Add them up, that's 1,300. So again, that's the braking force plus the resistive force. And then in the rod, we're either going to have a tension or a thrust. We're not sure just yet. Actually, for part E, we're trying to work out what is the direction of the force that the tow bar exerts on the car. So we're trying to work out later on, will this be a tension or a thrust? So I'm not going to draw that on for now. So those are the two resistive forces on the car. There's no more driving force. If I were to consider the car and the trailer as one single object again, so 2,000 kilograms, the overall backwards force will then be 1,500 newtons. Again, the tension or the thrust, that's an internal force. If, if they're both pointing this way, they just cancel out. Or if they're both pointing this way, if it's a thrust force, they also just cancel out. Okay, what else are we given in the question? We're told some initial speed, so we know that u is equal to 24. We're told that it eventually comes to rest, so v is 0. We're trying to work out distance, so this is looking like a SUVAC question. If we had one more quantity, either a or t, we could then work out what s is. In order to do SUVAT, you have to have three quantities. You have to know three quantities, and then you can work out a fourth unknown. From this diagram that we have down here, we can work out what the deceleration would be. So if we use the force, if we use the equation f is equal to ma, the acceleration is f over m, and that will be the, the resistive force is 1,500, and the mass is 2,000, that's going to be 3 over 4, so that will be our deceleration. And because it's a deceleration, we make it negative. So it'll be minus 3 over 4. With SUVAC questions, you have to pick a positive direction and then stick to that. So the velocity is this way to begin with. That's the 24 meters per second. We're saying that this is the positive direction, hence why this is a positive number. The acceleration acts in the same direction as the resultant force, which is towards the left, and that will therefore be negative. And now we can just put it into our equation, into our super equation to work out what s is. We can use v squared is equal to u squared plus 2as. Rearrange for s. So bring the u squared over. v squared minus u squared is 2as. Divide by 2a. We get s is equal to v squared minus u squared all over 2a, put in our numbers, divide by 2a, and type this in, and we end up with 384 meters. And that's part D done. So now for part E, find the magnitude and the direction of the force exerted by the tow bar on the car. So the question is basically asking us to figure out is the force in this tow bar going to be a tension force or is it going to be a thrust force? So if you're not really sure about thrust and tension in this scenario, I'll give an example and we can explain why it could be one or the other. So let's consider this car is pulling along the trailer. 
we're on a long straight road and there's a traffic light some ways in the distance. So the car can see it from a long distance away, they're gradually braking to then make that traffic light. And let's say the car is traveling quite quickly, so there's a lot of drag, therefore, on the trailer and the car. So in this kind of scenario, if the trailer is quite big, it experiences a lot of drag force, it acts a bit like a parachute, and it will pull the car backwards, especially if the car is gradually braking. If the car is gradually braking, the resistive force of the trailer might be large enough to actually help the car slow down, especially when you're traveling at higher speeds, then the drag force will be much higher. But if let's say the car and this trailer are in town, they're driving down a road, a traffic light turns red, they have to stop fairly quickly, there might not be much drag force in the trailer because they were traveling fairly slow to begin with, and the car is braking quite sharply, so in that kind of scenario, if it weren't for the tow bar, the trailer might crash into the back of the car there wouldn't be enough resistive force on the trailer itself, so there wouldn't be enough drag and friction in the trailer to slow it down at the same rate that the owner of the car wants to slow down the car and the trailer. So in the first scenario, when the car is driving quite quickly and the driver is braking quite slowly, then the trailer might be pulling the car because of the large drag it experiences and there would be a tension force. But in the scenario where the car is braking quite quickly, and if it weren't for the tow bar, the trailer would crash into the back of the car, then there would be a thrust force. Then the trailer pushes in to the tow bar, and the tow bar pushes back on the trailer. So as we know what the acceleration is in this scenario, the easiest way to work out whether we have a thrust or a tension force is to work out the resultant force on one of the objects. So I'm gonna pick the trailer for no particular reason, we know that the trailer and the car has an acceleration in this direction of 0.75 meters per second squared. That's what we got for A. We can then work out the resultant force. So the resultant force on the trailer would be 800 multiplied by 0.75, and that will be equal to 600 newtons. So there should be a resultant force towards the left because it's in the same direction as acceleration. And we can see from our diagram, we only have a 200 Newton force acting on the 800 kilogram mass right now. There must therefore be an additional force in this direction of 400 Newtons to help slow down the trailer. Well, if there's a force of 400 Newtons in that direction, it's a thrust force. Thrust force is what pushes two objects apart. There would therefore be a force of 400 Newtons in this direction as well. So for our working, we can then say, or write down, 600 newtons minus that 200 newton force should be 400 newtons. And then we just need to give a direction as well. So that would be 400 newtons pushing the car forwards. And then finally, on to part F, comment on the assumption that the original resistances to motion of the car and the trailer remain constant throughout the motion. So resistance to motion, especially air resistance, depends on speed. So as the speed varies, air resistance would vary, and therefore the overall resistance to motion would vary as well. So for that reason, it wouldn't be a very realistic assumption. 